What is this? A center for ants? Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. We're talking about Datacrons today, folks. Datacrons, y'all. Uh, not that we love Datacrons too much, but set three is, it's kind of interesting. It's way less potent than the previous sets, though I think there's a lot of hidden synergies going on here, folks. I've kind of changed my tune a little bit on Datacrons. They're, they're pretty frustrating sometimes, I won't lie, but I do like the theory craft of them a, li a little bit. So we're going to talk about set three today, and it's going to be great. It's going to be so good. You guys will see. <laughs> or maybe you won't, but there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to try to hustle through it. I don't know if you guys believe me or not, but here's the thing. I think this is the time, best time in the whole thing. I outlined my entire discussion here so that I could be efficient. And and now I'm telling you about it, so I'm not being efficient. But uh, I think this is the best time to do it, guys. So uh, if if you want to support this channel for free, all you've got to do is like, subscribe, comment, something to help me mount the algorithm. Really appreciate all that you guys have done. All the support. You're all, you're all amazing. And all I want is more. Just more. Uh, always more. Never, never not more, certainly. So, <laughs> gosh. All right, guys. So, first thing first. I did make an infographic. It took me for freaking ever. And it's still not the most epic and amazing, but you can find that on my Discord server if you go into the video description. There's a link to the Discord server. You can get it for free. The channel that it's on is called Infographics, and it's near the bottom. If you scroll toward the bottom, that's the, that's the channel. Get it for free. Be the hero your guild needs to send everyone this cool new infographic but we're also going to be discussing these in more in depth so hopefully you can understand uh, i mean hopefully hopefully this uh, like i'm going to show you guys obviously you can just look at the infographic if you want and that's it but i think there's more value in the discussion when we're going to go into more depth than just this infographic can provide that's just the nature of things so Let's actually get, let's, let's go jump into the actual infographic here. Right, so here's here's the big overview. And so, so you can, you can kind of see here, let, let's actually try, let's try here guys to get, yeah, okay, so we're getting, getting rid of this little blue glowy box for a minute, just so you guys can see the whole infographic. So it's not perfect yet, I'm, I'm still learning, still learning Photoshop, but here, here's the thing, guys. The bottom right, all, all these different teams show you what I per perceive, and obviously we don't know everything yet, but I, I do perceive these this to be the best build for each Datacron. And uh, so the numbers on each of the respective boxes to the left are going to show you uh, uh, the number. That, that's not the ranking. That's not like, oh yeah, I think this is the first best, this is the second best. No, those are just the numbers that correspond to where they go on the teams. If you want to build, if you want to build the Malgus team, for instance, which is the third one from the top, you go level three is a four. So then you can match it to the four on the top left on the level three targets. Then you go back, you say, okay, I want, what, what's the net, what's the ideal Malgus it comp for uh, level six? And then you can go to the Sith one and it, you see that it's number one. So you can just do that. So it's just, just for ease of building. If you guys want, hopefully it makes sense to, to you. I, it's, it makes sense to me. Also on the top right, you can see the order of priority. I changed it from my last infographic instead of doing priority one, priority two, and then uh, whatever asinine third I did, I, I, just pro I just made it a little easier. P1, P2, P3, just the levels of priority. So if you don't want to reroll something, but you get, you're like, oh, well, that's good enough for this set. That's fine, that's cool. So uh, that's that's basically it, guys. Just, uh, this is how, that's how you read it. And that, that being said, uh, I think, I think let's try start zooming in to some of this stuff. You guys have to do without my face for just a little bit. I'm, I'm very sorry to say. So we're going to go through the level three and level six targets here on the infographic itself. 
and then we'll probably jump into the game and talk about each individual character mechanic. So, level three. I mean, here's the thing, guys. I, I do think that the top one, the number one, here is going to hold a, a, some value for these different teams that I listed on under the other. Uh, just because every time you grant a buff to another ally, that that they recover 3%. On troopers, both Aiden and on the the Veer's comp, they're handing out so many buffs that this team those teams are just gonna remain topped off. Like I don't I don't know if Aiden Versio needs more, honestly, but uh, I mean just in terms of mechanics, that it works really well. First Order is also one that, you know, they, they can self-heal quite a bit. This is pretty nice in terms of trying to get efficient wins, honestly. I really do like this uh, for that, but not all Dark Side. A lot of Dark Side teams don't have any buffs that they share with each other, or very few. So, you just have to look look out for it. Like, Inquisition, for instance, if you don't have a good Datacron from set 1 for them, this one's decent because they give each other a lot of buffs. They debuff a lot, but they also buff quite a bit. Geos also buff each other a decent amount. And then we're also we're not going to talk about the light side version because, to be honest, I mean, we, you just basically want to be using set two if you can for for light side. So uh, unless you're doing one of the Mandalorian teams, which we'll talk about later. Uh, then I don't I don't think that for L3 that that's gonna work out that well. So all right on row number two I like this one because Okay, so dark side allies that start their turn with fewer than three buffs So there's a lot of teams <clears throat> such as Mandalorians or Sith or Night Sisters who don't start with a whole lot of buffs and So they're, they're gonna recover some health and protection. I mean that that's that's a nice passive thing. It's not that great. I mean, it's not plus 25 bonus percent bonus turn meter or anything. It's nothing crazy, but it is, it's fine. Uh, the third one here is only good. Like, it, it's good with, like, the Sith Eternal build that I'm going to show you guys. But otherwise, uh, this, this one's pretty weird. It's like, how often do dark side allies gain tenacity up? Really, not, not too often. And so that one's okay if you gain a lot of tenacity up, so if you have like the Sith Eternal build where you have lots of AoEs and stuff, then you're getting lots of tenacity up. Or, and uh, that's, that's not too bad, then you get the protection up, so it stacks. It's all right, this is fine. Otherwise, you have to have a very specific build for this one to work. The fourth one is the one that I consider to be the best. It's like the Amplify Agony data disc in Conquest. It's not quite as good, but Whenever you inflict a debuff on an enemy, you deal damage equal to their max, 2% of their max health. Which is pretty nice. Lord Vader especially, if he doesn't, if, if he doesn't have a good Datacron from set 1, or if your set 1 is about to just, I mean, it's about to die, let's face it guys, it's going to be dead soon, then the Lord Vader one is actually pretty decent for that. So, like Lord Vader, uh, you know, this could be a, a worthy replacement for Lord. Like Lord Vader does so many, so many debuffs. It's kind of fun actually to think of of that. On the other hand, two percent of their max health. I mean, really, even if you're doing like ten of them, like it, it's it's okay. It's not amazing though. And then finally, dark side allies that start their turn with at least three debuffs can be dispel that can be dispelled, gain tenacity up for two turns. It's like, what team are you facing that you expect to be debuffed more than this? I guess maybe like Inquisitors or something. I don't know. Like there's there's not many teams that you should expect to be debuffed like that and still like survive. So I I don't think. I mean I guess one of the things you could do, you could put it on like Sith Empire because you're if, if you have if you have the ferocity debuff from Darth Revan, like that that could work, but it's kind of a weird one. I don't know, that it's okay for Sith. Now that I'm thinking of it, it's like, uh, alright, alright. That, that one's that one could be okay for for like a a Sith Empire team, but otherwise. Alright guys, let's let's actually let's go. Let's look at the Night Sisters ones now for level three. So, um, the first one, are the, the there's only that's pretty hit and miss for the Night Sisters. 
Uh, the first one is actually, it's really interesting. The, the, when they released it on the forums, CG did not include this top one at all. That this wasn't one that was, so the ones that I've been looking at just didn't have this list. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, that is really intriguing. So the basic ability during their, during their turn, nice sister allies inflict plague. Uh, I mean, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty decent, actually. And, oh, hell, hello there. Hello there. <laughs> ah, okay. Yay, yay for face cams. All right, so here's the thing, guys. That's pretty nice because under Talzin lead, which is typically what people take for offense, there's going to be a lot of assists when people are dead, a lot of people using their basic anyways, and inflicts plague. I mean, that, that's pretty nice. To be honest, I mean, plague, plague is kind of their bread and butter, so that that's not too bad. Uh, the second one is okay. So they can they can recover health and protection equal to the amount the enemies returned or recovered. Oh, that that's fine. That's fine. I mean, it really is. It's okay. I just. Like, Nice Sisters don't really want to recover health and protection. Like, they just want to die, is what they want to do. So I, I don't I don't love that one for Nice Sisters. Uh, for, for number three here, whenever enemies are damaged at the start of their turn, Nice Sister allies gain 2% turn meter. So this one's tied for priority two. Uh, you know, it's number two or number three. So I, I like this one because... Plague is the thing that damages characters at the start of their turn, and if that happens, then uh, Nice Sisters gain even more turn meter than they normally do. I mean, that, that seems pretty nice, to be honest. I mean, if that happens to five characters, that's everyone gaining 10% turn meter. Uh, I mean, Nice Sisters are already crazy fast with their turn meter shenanigans. This, this makes them even crazier. Uh, so, then the other two... All right, so if it so if Night Sister allies damage all enemies with an ability, which only a few of them have the ability to damage all enemies with it, then they get tenacity up. I I don't know. I, do they need tenacity up? I I haven't seen a reason for that yet. Maybe there's an advanced comp that I'm just not looking at, not remembering. But otherwise, number five, at the start of their turn, Night Sister's allies recover. Protection if they inflicted at least five debuffs that turn. What what night sisters are inflicting that many debuffs, folks? Like Talzin, maybe if, if there's no foresight. Asajj if she has the Omicron, and who? I, I think that's it. So that's a big old nope. Then finally, guys, at the start of their first turn, my sister allies gain offense equal to 400% of their current defense. Then they lose 50% defense. This one was tricky for me. This is, I love this one though, because my sisters don't have high armor anyways, but they can gain a bunch of offense. So here, real quick, let's jump back. I'm going to show you guys something super epic here. All right, so on my, if, if you're signed up for my Patreon, you have access to this calculator. You can calculate how much armor you have, how much your percent armor turns into for flat defense numbers. And then you can, from there, calculate how much offense you're going to be adding to the character. So I think that this, I forget now if this is like my nice sister spirit. Uh, anyways, one way or another. It's, it's just a calculator. You can just plug in your percent armor, your percent resistance, and it'll spit out how much offense and special offense you're going to be have for that character. In addition to also showing what your modified armor and resistance are going to be if you do that. So if you sign up for my Patreon, you get access to that calculator until you're out of the Patreon. There's all there's other perks, etc. But that's definitely one that you'll have access to. If you're interested, video description, you can sign up for Patreon, guys. Super fun times. <laughs> um, it also, you know, we also have other calculators for that matter, guys. It's, it's pretty epic. You can see here, yeah, you can see we have the, the, the Troopers calculator, the Mando calculator with Zam, so that you can actually tell if you're... You know, Zam is going to go before or after Mando, or if your Mando is going before Bosk, etc., so that you can get the correct thing with the new Omicron. It's not really a new Omicron at this point, but that being said, let's get back to the infographic, shall we? All right, so Night Sisters, 
400% of their, I, I love that, because they, they're going to gain, uh, they're going to hit like trucks. They already do hit like trucks. It's going to be really fun. I'm really excited for that one, to be honest. All right, level three, Sith. So the first one is great for Sith Empire. It's kind of awkward. S-E and S-E-E. S-E-E -E is Sith Eternal Emperor. S-E is Sith Empire. So the first one, whenever an en enemy is inflicted with fear, pain, shock, fear, fear, pain, or shock, they gain 5% offense until the end of the... So they're just stacking. Why don't they say stacking in parentheses here? Like, the, the can, is there... They just can't get the their verbiage. Like, they just can't figure it out, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> why? It says stacking everywhere else on, on all the other things. Why can't it say stacking on this? But 5% offense until the end of the battle. Seems pretty nice. I mean, for, for the Darth Revan team, I mean, they, they're putting AoE shock on people. Pain isn't a thing. I mean, I guess you could put this on, like, a Treya squad as well if you really wanted to. And in fact, I think that this might go really well on a Treya squad. I didn't add anything about Treya, but the her whole thing is defense. And so, if you can, gain, if you can passively gain a bunch of offense on Scion, it's kind of a fun thing. Otherwise, I mean, fear and... That's fine. Sith Empire are really gonna benefit from this, though. They're gonna like Darth Revan's gonna start hitting like a damn. He's gonna hit like like two trucks because he already hits like a truck. All right, next one. So Sith allies recover health and protection equal to fifty percent. That, that's the same thing that we saw on that that other. One. I mean, it's okay. They can heal themselves. That's fine. Uh, another. That's another one that's okay for Treya squad. Like they just want to heal and be alive and not not die. That's a good one for Sith. For for a team like Treya, who you know you can get a bunch of these stats, the offense and resistance and stuff, and then you can heal a bunch. Just make the team super resilient. That's kind of nice, to be honest. It probably helps you counter like Lord Vader and stuff as well, if you want to do that. Uh, okay, so the next one, whenever Sith allies damage all enemies with an ability, they grant tenacity up for two turns to all allies. So if you run the Sith Eternal Squad that I show you guys, you're going to have a few AoEs. So if you do damage with to all of them, then you get tenacity up, and then the whole team gets bonus protection, and it's all a mechanism to keep Sith Eternal alive until he can fry people with his stuff. All right, the next one is... See his allies gain a bunch of offense, equal to 400% of the current off defense. You guys saw that calculation previously. It's pretty nice. You get, you get a pretty nice boost. But it's like, okay, so Sith Empire are nice, but, but they're going to lose a half, half their defense. And it's like Malgus is there now at this point. Why are you trying to get rid of his defense? Like, that, that's pretty rough for him. Though, I mean, uh, situationally, it could be really nice. So Sith Empire would be nice. Just, just don't put it on Lord Vader, guys. Lord Vader needs his armor. He really does. He needs his defense. This, He, he doesn't care about hit that 400%. Like, the, the offense, I guess it might be nice. I just, um... Yeah, I, I might not. I, I don't think he'd survive, to be honest. All right, next. Oh, whenever Sith allies recover health... Blah blah blah. Um, our protection equal to the amount of health. This is okay. That's situational. It's like, well, I mean, th this could be good on a Treya team as well. Like all these regeneration things are good on Treya, uh, to be honest. The last one, whenever a debuff on an enemy expires, Sith allies gain two percent potency and tenacity. This one's okay for Sith Empire because a debuff on like like Basti, Dark Basti has a bunch of debuffs. Uh, it's it's kind of nice, uh, you know, they're, they're going to get a ton of potency and tenacity at, uh, at by the end. I don't know if they need it, but they kind of get it. I mean, it's just the third priority. Lord Vader likes this one okay. I mean, I don't know. I, I say that he likes this. I, I kind of I almost regret that I put, put Lord Vader on here. Um, so he gains a bunch of potency and tenacity. I don't know that he needs it. Like... I guess it's nice to like not be ability blocked and stuff with Lord Vader, but otherwise, I mean, you probably just want to recover health with him. I I don't know. Like Lord Vader doesn't have any really really wonderful things for this set. Uh, I mean, no, not for level six. So uh, that's it for Sith. Let's let's real quick. Let's look at the Mandos, which is pretty interesting because these are the only light side teams that we actually even have. So. 
The first one is the best one, in my opinion, if the man of Mando ally damages an enemy with an attack. If the enemy is damaged during the last Mandalorian ally turn, all Mandos gain 2% offense until the end of battle. So, under a BAM team, uh, you can engineer it so that he... So the like Bo Katan goes, she does it at AoE, and then he does 20 whistling birds, and the whole team gains 40% offense. So even if you don't kill someone with those whistling birds, which if you get the level 9 on Mando, you're gonna be murdering some people. That they they won't get up from it. But the rest of the team gains a ton of offense after that. Really, really strong. Same with Maul. Maul a lot of times will go after Candorus does an AoE on the whole team. And then Maul is going to, then uh, he'll have enough turn meter that Maul is going to be able to hit, and everyone's going to assist, and it, it's just a whole mess. Like, Candace is going to hit three times, Maul's going to hit once, uh, all the other bounty hunters are going to assist, probably Django's hitting twice, and you're getting a huge amount of offense every single time Maul hits. He's hitting six times. It's, it's a whole mess. It's wonderful. It looks really cool. So, and then also, if you want to run a Bo-Katan team, if you don't have Maul, or if you don't want to use Maul there, you want to use Maul with Lord Vader, understandably, then a Bo-Katan team can also gain a huge amount of offense over time. So, really like that one. Otherwise, you guys can read this other one stuff. I mean, it looks okay. Like, whenever enemies are damaged at the start of their turn, Mando allies gain 2% turn meter. That works okay with Candorous there. Like, a lot of these are just, like, Candorous with the dots. Otherwise, I mean, Bo-Katan has a few of okay ones. Like, I, I, I like the top one. And then the other one's just really pale in comparison. I guess that the one on number two could be okay for Bo-Katan as well. Uh, just because... It, it's just going to make that team really resilient and annoying to face. So, uh, that being said, guys, let's, let's get to the actual game. We'll look at the actual mechanics on the different characters and then hopefully get you guys out of there as quickly as possible. Alright, whoa, we're in the game. Madness. It just looks like a list. So, here's the thing, guys. Uh, Beskar has three different ones. I, li I like a couple of them. But the one I like by far the most is the top one, just because you're you. It's it's going to be. I mean, it's it is going to be a crazy amount of damage. So especially in five v five, three v three, it's going to be a little less awesome because he's not going to get as many whistling birds. But swift takedown. So this is all about his his whistling birds, guys. So swift takedown deals twenty percent more damage for each stack of whistling birds. The Mandalorian at the start. So, it's 20% for each stack. So, if you have 5 stacks, then you're going to be doing <laughs> you're going to be doing 100% more damage. If you have 20 stacks, you're going to be four, doing 400% more damage. He already hits like a truck with his whistling birds if he's at max. This is going to just nuke entire teams and he can't be defeated while he's in his poop stance. He's immune to fear, stun, turn meter reduction, etc. It's just a really good one. If you can't roll that one, I assume that that one's going to be rare. If you can't roll that one, then I like the one that he just has his reset cooldowns every single time. If you have that one, you might want to use a different build, to be honest. You want, might, you might want to do something with a health recovery build, just so he doesn't kill himself. But, this is, this is pretty nice. This is pretty nice, just because, uh, I mean, who doesn't want to, like, you can go into Whistling Birds whenever you want. Like, it's, it's very versatile. A lot of these characters have this one. It, it is nice. I don't think that that's the best one for him, though. And then finally, he does more damage based on tenacity max percentage. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's, it's tenacity percentage. I, I don't want to have to remod the character. And because we're using this, it's a Datacron, we can't use Tenacity. I don't think Tenacity is a stat that we can gain, correct? Yeah, we can't gain Tenacity, so I don't think that that's the best one for him. My sister initiate. Uh, if you have an Initiate geared, I guess these could be okay. This seems so convoluted. This is kind of a statement on CG, not, like, they're afraid to buff. Night Sisters without a ton of caveats. They're like, okay, you get a bunch of protection up, and you get you can do like a damage over time, and you, you can resist some things. You get some, 
you know, if, if you do an in, if you inflict a debuff on an enemy, she gains 50% physical damage stacking uh, until the end of the battle and and a bunch 45% turn. I mean, it's okay. Like 50% physical damage is is pretty good over time. Though she's she doesn't start in a place of strength, to be honest, guys. So ramping up that physical damage, they're like, yeah, sure. Go ahead and just keep boosting that physical damage initiate. Uh, not to mention, guys, she takes like. I think it's like 400 Carbanti just to get her up to, uh, up to like gear 12. I, I don't know. You guys can do it. She's immune to daze and stun. I mean, she she can become an engine of destruction, I guess. I I don't think I'm going to be gearing her up for this though. I have to get a relic seven, and my, mine's at like gear, like eight, something like that. Um, and then the other one, whenever it uses an ability, it, it does some stuff. Tenacity. I mean, the tenacity percent damage is kind of a weird one. They keep having it. All right, allies revived by the Great Mother are not defeated after assisting. So, that's kind of nice. Uh, I mean, I, I like... I like that. Like, she calls people to assist, and then they don't... Uh, but, but we want them to die. For some of the mechanics, like, you want them to die and keep coming back. So this one, that one's kind of annoying. Uh, the one that I really like, at the start of each of Mother Talzin's turns... Uh, so she she resets her cooldowns every time so she can just spam her AoE forever Which is really cool uh, because a lot of the stuff that she has she gains turn meter based off of max percent or uh, based off of health being lost and everything and I, I think that this one could be really strong that that was the one I would want the other one is okay Whenever another ally attacks during Talzin's turn she and that ally get 25% turn meter So it, when she calls her mass assist she'll get an immediate turn afterward assuming she can gain turn meter and everyone else is gonna gain 25% That's that's pretty nice as well. Like all of the ones from Talzin are fine. I like the middle one the best though bo -Katan, the only one I really like is whenever another ally attacks during bo turn, she and that ally gain 25% turn meter. Think of Candorous doing triple taps every time he assists, and her gaining 25%, uh, and, oh, well, she's going to gain 75%, and, bo and so is Candorous. So, they're both going to gain 75% every single time Candorous goes during bo it has to be during bo turn. That, that's the only caveat. Like it, it's fine. I don't. I don't love it. Otherwise, whenever a buff is dispelled, she gains crit hit immunity. Woo! That's worthless. Whenever Bokatan Kree's attacks out of turn, so uh, they re they recover. She recovers. I don't know what this pro down business. Like is she? Whatever. We don't need to get into this. They recover twenty percent health and protection. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that, that one just makes her, this could make her a really tanky team, frankly. But, I mean, whenever, she has to attack out of turn. I, I just, well, whatever, guys. Whenever another ally attacks, you, you can guard against nest solos in 3v3 against, against Maul, I guess, if, if bo -Katan's there. Whenever another ally attacks during Asajj's turn, she and the ally gain 25% turn meter. I really like this to use with separatist guy, separatists, guys. If you use her well, like a, on like a Grievous team and B1 is assisting, she's going to be gaining a lot of turn meter. B1's going to be gaining a lot of turn meter. Seems like a good venture. Uh, whenever a buff is dispelled, she gains crit hit immunity. Worthless. See the eternal. Okay, so this is one that is an important distinction to add, folks. So this one, keep in mind. So it's twenty percent ultimate charge for each other Sith ally. Remember, it's each other Sith ally. When I first read it, I thought it was including himself. So I thought it was an instant ult. Instead, he only gains eighty percent maximum ult charge at the very start, which is fine. I do think ultimately, especially when you look at three v three, you're going to want to get, do the six percent ultimate charge instead. Math-wise, I think it just works better. So that, that's the one I would go for, the 6% ultimate charge. The other one is certainly nice, especially on defense. You're going to just fry people right off the bat. 3v3, it, it also isn't as good because you only start with 40% charge. Like, 40% charge, I mean, that that's fine. I will say, though, that top one will make you much more competitive against Kenobi builds if that's what you're really looking for. Though, the 6% bonus ultimate charge is also going to really do it, because if everyone's deceived, every time someone's deceived, you get 2%, except you get an additional 6% on top of that. So 8% for someone deceived? I mean, I think the 6% ultimate charge just wins. 
Then the other one, it's like, hey, look at that, you do less damage. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right, for Malgus, uh, you get some critical damage in offense and defense. Like, it's fine. That one's okay. That one's okay. But it really, like, so you're gaining, and it's, we have returned, so it grants all of this stuff. That, that's, a, that's fine. I really do like this one where he just resets his cooldowns, and every time, like, he's just going to heal like crazy anyways. And... He's just going to be doing, just spamming his big hit. Spamming, spamming, it's, it's going to be obnoxious as hell, guys. This is why people are going to want him Relic 9, because his huge hit is going to be really disgusting. Sith Empire Trooper, just don't do it. I mean, if you roll it and you want to put it, that's fine, I guess. Like, whenever he attacks at a turn, he heals health and protection. I mean, that's nice. He has retribution built in. That, that's fine. The other one, don't do not do the damage dealing one. If you want to do the health recovery one, that's fine. That is totally fine. So, anyways, folks, I was really hoping this video would be shorter. But there's a lot to talk about. We didn't even talk about stats. Uh, uh, overall, I don't really have that much to say. Armor and resistance, just keep in mind. Armor and resistance are... It's going to look like some crazy huge boosts and then you're gonna you're gonna apply them and you're gonna be like oh that wasn't that much that's just how it goes guys that's just how it goes with armor i mean it's just a weird stat weird stat weird defense though you remember you can use those armor and resistance bonuses to turbo boost your offense as well once once you get there the thing is you're just not the more armor you percent you add the less armor percent your character actually stacks, because you can never get to 100% armor. So, I don't know what to say, guys. I don't know what to say about that. Let me know what your thoughts are. This is an interesting set, I suppose. Go get that infographic, and yeah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, set, this isn't set two. Set two is amazing. Set three is like, well, I want a couple of these. I think the ones that I'm personally going to be going for, I want the Bando one for sure, the one that, with the huge crazy nuke looks fun. I, would, I wouldn't I would mind the Talza one, but I have to put more relics on my Night Sisters. Uh, Bo-Katan one could be good for threes. And then, uh, you know, the Asajj, uh, probably not, frankly. May, maybe, but Sith Eternal and Malgus for sure. I think the you guys can see the order of priority on the infographic. Those are what I personally want to go for. Those are the ones I think are best. So, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things... <laughs> I guess CG prevails, because they're, they're getting... Getting all the Datacron money, guys. <laughs> but so does Zareth. Zareth also prevails, guys. Take care.